Hi everyone, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you are watching this show. Hi, it's really great to have you here today. Welcome to the All Brands show for this week. Today is Thursday the 26th, so I'm really excited for you to come with us on this awesome, awesome show. We have so much to talk about. Um, before we go ahead and get started, I do want to say hello to a few folks in the chat. Um, and let's see. Let's go ahead and say hello to a few people in the chat here. Um, we've got Sh uh, Shannon. Oh my gosh, Shannon's been here since like 2.40. Shannon's really excited about this. Um, we've got Brenda over in Grand Prairie, Texas. Sorry if I have to skip over your name, by the way. We've got so many people watching us today. It's really wild. Um, we've got Paulette watching in Virginia. We've got Shirley over in Iowa. Um, oh my gosh. We've got Carolyn over in Arlington, Texas. Wow. Oh my gosh. There's so many people watching today. Um, we've got Susan over in Maryland, Ellen over in Florida. Oh my gosh. There's so many people watching today. Wow, guys, this is so exciting. Um, so I just want to say before we get started, it's really great to have you guys. And I'm so excited. And I know you're very excited, too, for Becky uh, Power Tools with Thread and her awesome YouTube channel and her amazing content. So we're going to be doing some cool stuff with Becky today. Uh, in the meantime, please, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to both of our channels. Becky Thompson's is Power Tools with Thread, which is probably why you're here. But if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we are just all brands on YouTube. That's us. Um, and if you haven't yet, please go ahead and like our main page on Facebook um, because we have a lot of stuff going on over there too. And follow us on Instagram at allbrands1976. That is, uh, that's our Instagram. And we've been posting a little bit more there this year. We want to stay more active there in 2022. So that's what we're kind of working on at the moment. We got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes uh, too. So get really excited for that. And guys, stay tuned because at the end of this, uh, at the end of this broadcast, we are going to be doing a $50 gift card giveaway. Now, you might be wondering, how do we enter into that $50 gift card giveaway? Well, all you need to do is go ahead and put in the comments, hashtag all brands. Okay, so that's all you need to do. So I see some people already doing it. See, y'all know you've been here. Um, all you need to do is comment hashtag all brands, make sure it's all one word to be entered into our $50 gift card giveaway. Um, and you can only be entered once. We've got a gift, uh, a giveaway counter that will enter you as soon as you, you comment that. So make sure that you do it before the end of the show. Um, and I think that just about covers it. So we're going to be talking about a lot of cool stuff today. We're going to be making a Mardi Gras table topper over on the Luminaire. Um, and we're going to be using uh, some cool applique. Um, we're going to be doing some applique work on this table topper. So I'm really excited for you to see this. Um, so without further ado, let me go ahead and bring on Becky. You know her. You love her. She is from Power Tools with Thread. So let's go ahead and bring her on. Hi, Becky. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing fabulous. There is so much going on and I'm just so excited about this. I want to thank all brands for having me. And uh, this is just so much fun to be able to share your platform, to reach out to people everywhere so that they can sew and embroider and just really enjoy everything that they can do in their sewing room. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I, I'm really excited about this. I know that, you know, not all of our viewers are from either the Louisiana or Texas or wherever Mardi Gras is celebrated area. You know, um, I know we've got a lot of people from New York and Florida and stuff, but I think this is going to be really fun anyway. And this is a great opportunity to put a little Mardi Gras in your house, even if you're not in the New Orleans area proper or in Louisiana at all. So oh, I, I celebrate Mardi Gras anyway. It does not matter. Any excuse. Yeah for a party. <laughs> exactly. And I think at this point, you know, 2021 was a weird year. I think we could all use a good party right now. So, so let's go ahead and uh, and just jump straight into it, Becky. Uh, where do you want to start? So thank you so much again. So what I wanted to talk about today is kind of over my head here. I am, uh, this is a table topper. This is a Kimberbell Cuties table topper. It looks like a duck. It looks like a dog, but it's actually a snowman. And 
he's got a little hat. Those are the little hats that you're seeing as snowballs and whatnot. And then this was January's and here is February's. And on my channel, Power Tools with Thread and the blog, I am doing the Kimberbell Cuties Table Topper uh, book. This is, there are 12 table toppers in here. They are 22 inches square. And there's one for every month of the year. So here's the little, whoop, I'm backwards on my camera, you guys. So here's the little snowman that I was just showing. And then there's the one for February. And the reason I'm doing this is because I kind of have a mix on my channel. I have embroiderers that are not quilters and I have quilters that are not embroiderers. And these cuties table toppers are a great way for you to start your skills. My niche is the beginner in all of those uh, stitching, uh, you know, applications. And I just kind of make tutorials. I'm not a professional in any sense of the word. I just have been doing this a very long time. And I bring you along on my journey. And I decided, I've had this book for a while, and I decided, you know, I need to make these. And I thought 2022 was a great way to start it. So along with the table topper book, there is a companion embroidery CD, and this is a separate purchase. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this because the book, which Kimberbell calls the sewing version, has pictures in the back for applique. So you certainly can join along if you're not an embroiderer and you can use these to create your applique the old fashioned way by tracing it onto heat and bond and then ironing it to the back of your fabric, cut it out with scissors and then go ahead and sew it to your table topper. But because I am power tools with thread, I don't like to do hardly anything by hand if I can avoid it. So what I do is I leverage technology and the technology that is inside of all of our machines to be able to automate the entire process for me. And one of the ways I figured out how to do that was to use a software program called Simply Applique. And Simply Applique is a module that is inside of the BES4 software as well. So if you have BES4, you can do this whole process I'm about to show you as well. But the, the Simply Applique program uses a file from the brother Scan and Cut. So you would scan in your picture into the Scan and Cut, get that file, and then download it into Simply Applique. And with the touch of one button, and I'm going to show you how to do that. With the touch of one button, Simply Applique will turn your design into a machine embroidered applique design. It will create the placement stitch, the tack down stitch, and the final satin or blanket stitch, plus the scan and cut cuts out your fabric for you. So all of that is automated. And today I wanted to show you exactly how I'm going to do that. So one of the things, so like I had said, these all, you know, there's one for every month. Well, what if you want to make one for something different like Mardi Gras? And that's not covered in here. And what I was going to talk about today was you can use any of these patterns that you want and then use your own fabrics to make it what you want it to look like. And I have done that. This, I created this table topper right here. Check out my Mardi Gras table topper. Isn't that awesome? And this table topper is uh, made from the October pattern. So what would normally be considered Halloween, I have used that pattern to make this. And I wanna show you. I already have done applique on three of the triangles. I did this completely, cut it out with the scan and cut. I'll get up real close so you can see. Can you guys see how good that is stitched and how perfect that is? Becky, that looks awesome. Oh my gosh. 
This is done by the Simply Applique program that I created the file with using the Brother Scan and Cut. I get a lot of questions about can you can you do this with another cutting machine? You can certainly cut out the pieces, but the ability to use the file, the cut file, uh, will not work without a scan and cut. You need to be able to scan in the image or pull the image from in inside the machine, which is what we're going to do today, because the scan and cut is loaded with images. As a matter of fact, that's where I got this treble clef. That's where I got the crown. And that's where I got the Florida Lee. I got all of these from inside the Brother Scan and Cut. They're already there. All I had to do was make them the size that I wanted and then imported that FCM file. I uploaded it to the Brother Canvas website, which is free. And then I downloaded the file into Simply Applique and literally, literally one button, boom. So I've done this process before on this show and that was all a lot of fun and everybody can go back and watch that other there you know if you if you go to youtube and you just type in all brands youtube it'll come up and you can watch me do that as many times as you like i also have an entire playlist on my channel power tools with thread you can type in power tools with thread simply applique and you'll get oodles of videos of things I have done using Simply Applique, and I take you step by step by baby step through all of that, how to, how to install it, how to get your patterns into it, what buttons to push, when, how to reorder your designs if you wanna do more, like if you're doing a layered applique, you can do all of that. And uh, it, just, it just works so good. As a matter of fact, I have made a huge quilt with a multi-layered applique using Simply Applique. So what I was going to do today that is new is we're going to go ahead and finish the quilting on this particular topper using a brand new product that's out from Kimberbell and they're called Clear Blue Tiles. And you guys may have heard of these, or you might see them called CBTs in the uh, Facebook group. We have a Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. Lots of inspiration there. Please uh, join. It is a private group, so you got to answer a few questions in order to join. But uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful group of people there. If you're looking for inspiration and how-tos, and there are no stupid questions, none. We don't tolerate that. You can ask anything you want, and you will get tons of advice. We have everybody in there from beginners to seasoned embroiderers, and, uh, and, and we just have a really good time on that channel. And so one of the things that is new on the market are these clear blue tiles. I also have a video on my channel, Power Tools with Thread, Clear Blue Tiles. You can pop, It'll pop up and I take you through exactly how to use these. But I'm going to do that again here today. So if you want to go through the Clear Blue Tiles now, Cal Callie, or do you want to wait for a minute and do it in a little bit? You know what? Um, let's do it now. Let's talk about it now. But we have a few questions before you get started. It looks like we are okay. getting a good bit. Great. Um, so let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and check out some of these questions that we're getting. Um, oh my gosh, where did I, I just lost it. Here we go. Uh, so Janice on YouTube is wondering, so if you do not have the scan and cut, can you not use the Simply Applique software? Simply Applique software works on any uh, Windows machine and it will work on a Mac with Parallels and a Windows OS. Yes. But you do have to have a Windows machine. In the, you can use the software. It's just more difficult mm -hmm. because you have to get the paper pattern and you need to get it into an SVG format because you can, which is a scalable vector graphic, what's used for images in our world. And if, because when you go to the Brother Canvas, you can import an SVG into the Brother Canvas and then download, it will convert it to the FCM file that you need to use for Simply Applique. 
Right. It, the trick to getting that done, if you have a different cutting machine, is you would need to print their calibration page, uh, take a picture of the image, get it calibrated with your phone, and then upload that image to the cloud for your cutting machine, create the SVG, then download it, and then upload it into Brother Canvas. It's a whole lot of mess, and it's it's it's... It's a challenge. It is a challenge. And I'm all about easy. So that I'm not going to tell you, no, it does not work with these other. Uh, but Simply Applique, it was designed. So was BES4 to be companions with the Brother Scan and Cut. They are designed to flawlessly work together. And the Scan and Cut is a whole different technology from the other cutting machines that are out on the market. Because of the ability to scan in paper applique patterns, which I love to make paper applique. So make quilts from applique patterns. Right. So let's see. We had uh, we had another question from Terry over on YouTube. Terry's wondering, Becky, when you have gotten an SVG file of an applique, what steps can be cannot be done? Cannot be done. I think I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. I'm not sure I understand, Terry. Um when you get an SVG, like let's say you buy an SVG off of Etsy, okay? You, right. you downloaded an SVG. You can certainly upload that SVG file into the Brother Canvas and download it and then import that file, that FCM file from Brother Canvas into the uh, Simply Applique. You certainly can. Yeah. Right. So let's see, we had, I think we had just one more that I noticed. Oh, Mary is wondering, can you hand cut appliques and still use the embroidery, uh, the embroidery CD? So um, when you, yes, absolutely. But you actually kind of do that backwards from the way you put it. Mm -hmm. When you use the embroidery CD, uh, what you end up doing is this CD has the placement line and you take your, let's say you don't have a cutting machine at all, right? right. So you take the placement line. That total, This totally does away with the whole requirement for the extra software that I was talking about that goes on a Windows machine. So you would use the CD and put that in your embroidery machine. It will make the placement line and you will lay a large square of fabric over the placement line, completely covering it. And then it will make the tack down line. I think it goes around once or twice. Then you use some sharp scissors and get in there and trim around the tack down line. And then your very next stitch will go over and finish it with the final satin stitch. So you don't have to have a cutting machine at all in order to be able to use this if you've got the CD. Did that okay. answer the question? I think so. I think it did. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to check on availability of a few things too while we're while we're doing this. Um, if I had an octopus right now, that would be awesome with just all those hands. <laughs> so um, um, talk about what's in the clear blue tiles box. Yeah, while you talk about that. that. Yeah, we go do that. All right, Callie. We need to run Callie through a copier and make about three or four copies yes, of this. So she I can need three clones <laughs> of myself. <laughs> yeah, would be awesome. <laughs> Okay, so inside of the clear blue tiles box, what you get, I, just straight up, this is a visual alignment system for their embroidery files, for Kimberbell's embroidery files. That's all it is. It's going to make it super easy for you to see what design needs to lay out on your project and where. Inside the box, let me see if I can tilt my phone just a little bit. Y'all just bear with me while I tilt it down. There we go, so that you can see what's going to be inside the clear blue tiles box. Let me move my other hoop out of the way. So in here we have, you get a book that fully explains in full color how to use the system and what it is for. So this is a picture of all of the tiles. You literally get tiles inside of this package. And there are two different types of tiles, and I'll talk about those in a minute. And you go through, and it tells you exactly how to mark the tiles, and it explains everything that you need to know about how to use these tiles 
and then it will give you a list of designs that are inside on the USB stick that comes with this. And these designs, there's a set for every single brand of home embroidery machine. You get ART, DST, EXP, HUS, JEF, PES, VIP, VP3, and uh, XXX, that's the singer. So you have your book that will go over how exactly to use this, but you'd want to watch my channel and see how to do that, right? <laughs> so inside here we have, here's a sample. This is the four by four clear blue tile that is right here. It comes with a couple of water soluble marking pens. You get a USB stick that has all of the designs on it and you get a couple of slap bands that you can use to wrap around your project if you're using a big project and then in, in here is packaged all oh yeah, here's a slap band that was sneaking around in there here are all of the clear blue tiles that you use and you get these for every uh there are tons of sizes there's like a total of 60 different plus uh, there are, uh, let me see, there's 12 finished border tiles and there are 14 finished block tiles, two, uh, water soluble pens, two slap bands and a USB. That's what comes in here. So you're going to get 26 different clear blue tiles. That's all that comes in the box. And I'm going to show you how easy they are to use in just a minute. So Kelly, I think, so what I'm going to do now the first thing I want to do is to be sure to hoop. I want to hoop my uh, my table topper because I want to be able to stitch down that that little trumpet. And I, in the magic of television, I've gone ahead and I have a, a printout of what the trumpet looks like. And I'm just since we're here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this ready now. I've got no-show poly mesh inside. This is a six by 10 hoop. I'm gonna turn it straight to me because it'll help me. And I'm gonna use the Designs and Machine Embroidery Hoop Mat. This thing is phenomenal. I absolutely love it because it has this nice dark line right here through the center that allows me to accurately see my crosshairs and then here, I can place the hoop and match the, the tips on uh, top, bottom, side to side accurately. And yet, because this is a silicone mat, it will not allow my hoop to shift, which I absolutely love. But yet, you can pick it up and move it really easy. So it's just one of the greatest things. So I've got that. And then I want to be able to hoop the trumpet. And the easiest way I have found to do that is to create a printout. This is the printout of the trumpet that we're going to put right here. And I like to trim it to within a quarter of an inch of all sides of the design. And then that way I can place it exactly where I think it needs to go. I'm lining up the center crosshair here on the printout with the center seam in the blocks in here and the point down here to make sure that it's straight. Let me do that. That looks good. And it looks like it, uh, it looks like it's pretty centered, right? Like that. So then I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use just a chalk marker. Old school, you guys, chalk marker. I'm going to put this chalk line right here on that side of the paper and fold this down and put the chalk line right here. So that gives me a crosshair exactly on center where I need to uh, place the design. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna kinda fold this up right here and move it over where approximately it needs to go. Now, because I've got the Luminaire, 
I'm going to be able to drop my crosshair on there and rotate the design to exactly what I need so that it's going to stitch properly. But by using this mat, I get a real good idea of where center is in the hoop to start with. I have a lot of people tell me, I'm using this hoop, I know it's big enough, but I keep getting an error that tells me I need to change to a larger hoop and I know I don't need to. Well, part of that could be because the design, the sides of the design are actually too close to the edge of the hoop and you just don't realize that. So you need to be sure to get as close to center as possible like that when you start. And then I'm gonna float this by just pinning this in place on the no-show poly mesh. And you can also use, uh, I'm gonna squirt the, um, the stabilizer with some KK2000 there. And that's gonna make, um, that's just gonna keep it nice and smooth in the hoop. There, and it's not going to go anywhere. So you can tell from that Mardi Gras quilt behind me, I was doing this like crazy yesterday. Oh, all weekend, I've been busy getting these things done, trying to get ready for Mardi Gras. Nothing like a crawfish boil. Okay, so I'm about ready. This is ready now to go over to the Luminaire. And maybe I'll put one more pin right over here and stitch this down. So first thing we need to do is we need to cut out the little trumpet. So Callie, I'm going to move my camera whenever you're ready. I'm ready whenever you are. I'll, hear, I'll go ahead and change over to my camera uh, so people don't get motion sick. Um, so I am currently checking on the availability of a few things right now. So um, I, if you have any questions about availability there, uh, I'm working on it. I'm checking in on some stuff. Um, we had some folks asking about the rotary blade. This is brother's new rotary blade that can be used on all DX and SDX scan and cut models. Um, if you haven't seen the rotary blade, absolutely check it out. It is a game changer, I think, in terms of scan and cut. And we do have them on our website right now. You can see them uh, down here at this link. Um, I can go ahead and link that over on the chat as well, uh, or over down in the chat. Um, so those clear blue tiles, you guys, I think they're great. I love them. Um, and we did check on availability just before we went live today. So the Kimberbell book and CD for those table toppers and our clear blue tiles are on the way to us right now from Utah. So we should be getting them very, very, very soon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link that uh, that rotary blade down in the chat too. But I think, um, Becky, are you ready? Yes, absolutely. All right. Okay, so I have got my uh, scan and cut. This is the SDX225. I've got a little glare on there. Let me turn my light just a little bit. See if that doesn't help. There we go. That's better. Okay, so this is the 225. And a lot of people ask me, what model scan and cut should I get? I'd just like to let you know, if you have a luminaire, you would want to look at a 325 or higher because there's a new feature for the scan and cut to talk directly to the brother luminaire, which is amazing. That's incredible technology. So I'm going to open this up and I have the fabric for my trumpet right here. I've got heat and bond light on the back and I am using the teal low tack mat and this is heat and bond side down fabric side up now if you don't have this mat and you're using either the purple standard tack or the gold fabric mat if you've got heat and bond light on the back you want to put it fabric side down and mirror your image okay and you can do all of that in the scan and cut but because i'm using the low tack mat I can go fabric side up. So that's really important. I just want to let you guys know. Okay. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about 
I thought you did it the other way. Well, it totally depends on the mat that you're using. I'm going to load the mat by pressing the mat. Uh, that's the load button right there. And let me uh, let me cancel that. So I'm just going to load the mat. Now, I had talked about getting the design from inside the machine. And normally when I do my my uh, my cuts, I'll go to retrieve data because I'm getting designs from like a USB or maybe I sent them over wirelessly. I love that feature. But now I want a pattern that's like inside the machine. So I'm going to touch the patterns. And then I'm going to go to the Eiffel Tower and the tree. Those are shapes that like this is uh, standard shapes and these are designs, uh, picture designs or whatever. I'm going to touch that. And on the 225, and it totally depends on what model uh, you have. Let me see if I can get any closer here to where you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, maybe I can lower this. I want you guys to be able to see. I've got my phone on a tripod, y'all. Technology. Okay. Is that a little bit better like that? Let me get closer. Yeah. Okay. All right. So right oh, here, Elizabeth, this is just the 225 model. This is not the 225F that Becky has. We do have the 225F on our website. All right. Sorry, Becky. That's all right. So the difference between the 225 and the 225F is the F comes with a fabric mat. It did not, the 225 did not come with a fabric mat. I had to buy that separate. So for the most part, the 225 and the 225F are pretty much the same. So if you have a 225F, this is what your screens should look like. So, and then it also comes with the gold fabric blade. So that did not come in my machine. I had to buy the blade and the fabric mat separately. So right here in this second row, there's like a little cog wheel and there's a trumpet. That's the trumpet I'm after. So I'm going to touch that and I'm going to go down one page and there's my trumpet right there. I'm going to touch it and I want my trumpet to be five and a half inches wide because it gives you the height and the width. I'm going to press the plus sign till I get up to five and a half. And I'm going to go past it five or six times until I can finally get back to where that's the way it works, y'all. See, I can get exactly to 5.5. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to tell it okay. And yeah, that's the one I want. I'm going to tell it okay. And now I'm going to set. Because see, it's put it on that little screen, 5.5 by 2.82, tell it set. And now it has put it on a mat. So here's the beauty of the scan and cut that you don't get with other cutting machines. Right here, there is a blue button with a, it looks like a mat with a bar across it. And so we're going to touch that and I'm going to scan the mat so it can see the fabric that I put on there. I'm going to hit start. Well. Let me back away a little bit so you can watch it all. Make sure my fabric is on there real good. And I'm going to hit start. And now it's going to scan in and scan the fabric. I'll give you guys a little tip. If you need to clean your mats, I have found the Costco version of Cottonelle wipes is the best thing. <laughs> There's no alcohol in them. There's no oil and they don't shred any fibers on your mat and they work phenomenal. So just a little tip there for me to you. If you watch my channel, you get all kinds of tips like that. So here is the, the trumpet and now you can see my fabric. Can you see my fabric? Let me... Let me go dark and see if you can see my fabric. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to take the trumpet and I'm just going to move it so it's sitting right in the middle of the fabric. Now I know that it's going to cut directly on the fabric and it's not going to be wrong or short or anything like that. So I'm just going to hit OK. And then it says, please select. And I'm going to tell it cut. 
And it's going to be done in just a minute. I'm going to hit start. I tell you, I would not want to cut this by hand, those little keys that are on the trumpet and cutting out the center hole. No way. I would butcher this with scissors. So Becky, while that's almost done cutting out, we have a few questions right now. Um, just to confirm, you are using the fabric blade right now. That's the, the gold blade in the scan and cut? Yes, I am using the fabric blade. That's because my other one, I made it really dull. <laughs> <laughs> and from all brands, I ordered new blades. You don't have to order. So mm -hmm. what is nice about this, you don't have to, or this is the holder. You don't have to order this whole thing. The if you if I push this down, you there's a little tiny blade in there. You can replace just the blade. And I love that feature. I don't have to buy a whole new thing here. So I just replaced the blade in that. Yeah. But you can use the, the regular black belt blade as well. Either one works. But since I'm using thin fabric, I use the fabric blade. All right. So I'm gonna just pull this off. Y'all look. Look how perfect. Uh, use my handy dandy little weeding tool here and weed that piece out. And then when I get fabric off the mat, I don't pull it. I'll put my, my scraper under there, my little spatula, and just kind of scrape it. And that way you don't stretch the fabric at all. There, there you go. It's perfect and it is ready to be sewn onto my topper. So on the scan and cut now, let me um, eject the mat and close this up and I wanna get you closer. So now I'm gonna tell it okay and I'm gonna go back by hitting that back arrow and down here is a button for save. I'm gonna hit save. And it wants to know, where do I want to save it? I can save it inside the machine. I can save it to the cloud or I can save it on a USB. And I'm going to save it to the cloud. So I already have an account that this machine is linked to on uh, the Brother Canvas. And I have a video on my channel that tells you how to link the scan and cut to the canvas. And it's done. It says save, save successful. So, Callie, we're ready to go over to the laptop. All right. Well, awesome. Here, I will go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and put myself on the screen, but let me know whenever you're ready and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and keep going here. So we're going to move over to Becky's laptop right now. And I just want to take this time to say, hey, guys, if you have not subscribed to Becky's YouTube channel. Her YouTube channel is Power Tools with Thread. So if you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe to her channel. She puts out some fantastic educational content. I know that these machines can seem incredibly intimidating at first because there are so many things that they can do. However, we're here, Becky's here, uh, her amazing channel is here to kind of demystify a lot of this for you. And that is what I love uh, so much about working with Becky and doing cool stuff like this. Um, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and tag a friend down in the comments who you think should totally watch this because I love just opening up the Facebook app and finding like something that a friend has tagged me in and watching it and being like, oh yeah, cool. So definitely do that if you haven't yet. And it looks like, um, I'm trying to see if we have any comments uh, right now that I can answer. Um, let's see. we got a lot of people saying hello. Oh, and something else that I want to mention, if you are just joining us, that's okay. If you missed some of this, not a huge issue. Um, don't worry about it. You can rewatch the show as soon as we go off the air. It will be available to rewatch in it's full, uh, the, the full video will be available to rewatch as soon as we go off the air on Facebook and YouTube. So let's see, Becky, do we have, uh, do we have the, the screen up? Yep, we sure do. All right, Can let's go ahead. And that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So this is the Brother Canvas workspace. As I said earlier, it is free to create an account on here. And 
you've got some tabs across the top that say canvas project my projects there's pattern collection and you can even get disney designs in here and then they've got all kinds of free project look at that beautiful valentine's day card that you can cut from the uh the brother canvas this is just gorgeous such pretty stuff and they change it all year long for the seasons but since i uploaded that trumpet i'm going to come up here to the tab for my projects i'm going to click that and uh, i'm going to pull it up there's the one i was playing with yesterday that's the big one that's on the quilt and let's see if i can get this one it's thinking about it Oh, it might be this one. Let me see if I edit. Oh, there it is. So you've got two buttons here. You can edit or you can download. And there is the trumpet that I just cut out. So you can do anything you want with this. But right now, I just want to let you know if you you can click on it, you can use these little handles to uh, skew it you can change it around and all that but look at this size right here when I click on it 5.50 that's exactly what I want by 2.82 do not change the size once you have cut your piece so if you want to play with the size first in the canvas you can and then send that down to the scan and cut and cut later but since we cut first I'm not going to fiddle with it and I don't have to do anything with it at all, but I want to get what's called an FCM file that Simply Applique is going to use to turn into an applique file. So all I have to do is come over here to this great big button that says download, and I'm going to click it. It will download in two different formats, and it says select the file transfer method. Here's the scan and cut transfer, where it will download that cut file. Notice I did not say SVG. The scan and cut does not make an SVG. And it tells you down here at the bottom how to transfer the FCM file to your cutting machine. And it, it talks about FCM files. That's what the scan and cut uses. And that's why the technology for the scan and cut is different from other cutting machines. So what I want to do is download to the PC and it is uh, there is the number that 113.fcm and that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to hit download to PC. And there it is right there. It came into my downloads folder right here. And again, if I wanted now to download it to the scan and cut, I could hit this button and then cut it afterwards, whatever you wanted to do. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder right here. And on this file, if you click open file, that's not really what you want. I am going to go to the show in folder on the Windows uh, PC and click this. There it is right there. Now, the reason you can see this is because, and you can see everything else I've been working on today, but the reason you can see this is because I am using a thumbnailer program from Brilliance that allows me to see my FCM files as images, which is really nice. But I want to rename this so I know what it is. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to show more options and rename. And I want to call it trumpet-sm. I'll call it SM2 because I was playing with this earlier so I know which one is which. Trumpet small two, and I'm going to hit uh, enter there. And then now I'm going to open uh, BES4 software. Let me minimize all of this. Let me get this open here. I will just open a whole brand new tab so we can start from the beginning and you guys can see. So oh, Becky, it looks like you're uh, you're in a new tab, so you're going to have to share that tab. All righty, uh, let me go back and okay. Hey guys, we're going to change the camera. We're working on it right now, but thanks for bringing that to our attention. Okay. Um, I have to 
You're gonna have to stop sharing for just a minute. Yeah. Okay. So actually, yes. It's not a tab. I need to share. Mm -hmm. uh, have to share a yeah. Share. I've got stop screen video file and slides. That's not what Here, I want. I'll, um, I'll take your uh, I'll take your screen share off. Oh wait, no, I think okay, you have wait, to do wait, that on Yeah, you'll have to do that on your end, but then uh, then you should be able to to go ahead and and share again. Okay, so now yeah. I'm gonna go Thanks to share in the comments, guys. Appreciate the everybody staying on top of it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and show that again for those of you who who did miss it. So we're just working on that really quickly. That is and not. Then, oh, what's that? It's not. Hold on. You just keep talking. Oh, okay. Well, here, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and mute you. Just go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up, I guess, whenever you're ready. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, guys. So again, while we're while we're letting Becky go ahead and change her um, her camera, please go ahead and comment if you have not yet. Please go ahead and comment hashtag all brands, and that will enter you into our fifty dollar gift card giveaway that we are going to pull for at the end of this show. Um, and make sure when you when you're doing this, just go ahead and make sure that it's all one word. It needs to all be one word, um, and then. You can go ahead and just comment that. You don't have to comment anything special. You could just put that. That's okay. Um, and that will enter you into the gift card giveaway. So uh, again, just to answer a few questions, if you've already entered, um, it's going to, you, you're, you only get one entry. So if you've already entered, don't worry about it. Um, but if you have yet to, then definitely go ahead and do that. Um, because that will enter you into that $50 gift card giveaway. And then you can use that 50 bucks for something that we've talked about on the show today. Uh, maybe, you know, if you're looking into those clear blue tiles, definitely uh, check that out. And if you're looking into those, then uh, that's a great place to spend that. Um, there are a bunch of other things that I would personally recommend. Um, Tracy, unfortunately, no, we don't have any discount codes specifically for the show today. But if you go on our website and check out our specials and promotions page, which I will go ahead and try to link down in the chat for you just very quickly, um, you can see all of the different coupons that we've got going and all the different specials and promotions that we've got going on at the moment. We do have a few awesome financing and uh, sales going on on some uh, on some products here. So let me go ahead and link that promotions page for you. Um, so that's down there and we've got some really awesome stuff coming up. Um, we're offering financing on some very cool products. Um, so let me go back to Becky and I think Becky, I think we got it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So this is up here at the top. It'll tell you it's pace setter B E S four dream edition. Uh, this, like I said, Simply Applique is a module inside of BES4. So if you have either one, you can do what I'm about to show you. And what I'm going to do here, if you have Simply Applique, this is an A, but since I have BES4, it's a B. I'm just going to click this button and I'm going to come down here to import FCM. And I'm going to go to my trumpet small to. And it says, you can see down here, it says FCM files. And I'm just going to click open. There's my trumpet. That's exactly what I'm after. And like I promised, I'm going to turn it into an applique file with the click of one button. And there you have the home tab. You have a range. You have tools. I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to go arrange because my brain does not like this trumpet being like it is. So I'm going to click on rotate and I'm going to left 90 degrees and that makes me happy right there. I just like to do that. But I'm going to go to tools. Oh, I need to highlight it first. Make sure it's it's clicked on and it's highlighted. And on the tools tab up here, I'm going to come all the way over here and there's one button that says convert to applique. I'm going to click it. Ta-da! And it's done. So what it has done now, if I come over here in the sequence view, I'm going to click the little plus sign. There's the applique icon. I'm going to click that. 
This is your placement stitch, your tack down line, and your final blanket or satin or motif stitch. And I want to do a blanket stitch on this. So I will show you, just come up here and click the top. And when you click up at the top, over here on the right, you get in the properties panel, it says applique type, and there it says satin. I'm gonna hit the drop down arrow and I'm gonna go to blanket. And then I want my stitch length to be like 1.5 because this is small. And I want the width to be 3.0. And I'm going to come down here and click apply. And there is my blanket stitch. And I'm all done. So I'm ready to save this now. And I'm going to come back up here to the top to the B. And I'm going to click save as. And I'm going to save it in a folder called EMB Designs. That's a folder that's on my desktop where I have all of my embroidery files that I'm going to send wirelessly over to my Luminaire. Or you could save it to a USB stick, whatever you wanted. I'm going to title it Trumpet 2, just so I don't get confused with any others that I've been playing with. And where it says Files of Type, I'm going to come over here and hit this arrow, and here is every kind of home embroidery machine that you could possibly do. So here's all of your brother, Baby Lock Berninas. There's your Janomis, Kenmore, uh, the Elna, the Viking, the Foth, the Tajima, the Singer. They're, they're just, they're all here. So this works with, here's the... Pro Stitcher. This works with every type of home embroidery mas machine. So I'm going to click that. And there are my clear blue tiles that I have ready to go. But I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to open up the Brother Design Database Transfer. This is a free download from Brother. And I'm going to uh, just refresh my folder because I already sent these clear blue tiles designs over to the Luminaire. I'm going to, I'm just going to show you how easy this is. You have to have your machine turned on and you need to have gone, clicked OK one time and let it gone through its initial sequencing. I'm going to click the desktop and then I'm going to go back to my EMB designs and there is my trumpet. I'm going to click it and hit this down arrow right here to put it into the writing list and make sure it's highlighted. And then we have send to, and I have already uh, uh, attached my, Darla is my luminaire and Spanky is my 10 needle. So I'm gonna send it over to Darla. And all I have to do is just hit this button right here with an arrow and the sewing machine and Failed to transfer, check the status of the machine and the network. And my machine, let me go figure out what's going on with that. And guys, so we have a few questions um, from some people down in the chat. We had some people wondering what software this was. This is BES4, uh, but we are talking about the functions of Simply Applique today. Right, and Simply Applique looks absolutely identical to BES4. Yes. The screen is the same, the buttons are the same. I have Simply Applique on a laptop down at the coast. So I've played with that before I got BES4. Mm -hmm. When I bought my brother 10 needle, the uh, PR1055 Entrepreneur Pro from all brands, the BES4 was a plus one and I got that for free with the machine. Yes, so I let know. me let me click this one more time and see what's going on here. No. Nope. Well, sometimes technology does not behave. And so what <laughs> I'm gonna do <laughs> so much for that. Live we TV. Work. We wing it on the all brand show. <laughs> Welcome to the all brand show. I just <laughs> I just put in a USB stick and I'm gonna go file and save as. And let me go to, let me see about my libraries, maybe this PC, hit this, and where's my USB? Um, one of these, 
Oh, wrong one. See, of course I picked the wrong one, right? <laughs> and I need to be sure to save it as a PES. There it is. And I'll tell it save. Okay. So I'm going to take this over to the uh, Luminaire now, and we're going to stitch it out. Awesome. So we can stop sharing, and you can go back. I'm going to move my camera. For sure. All right, guys. So this has been, I, I'm learning a lot. I hope you're learning a lot. This has been super fun. Um, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to both of our channels. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, our YouTube channel is just all brands. You can go ahead and subscribe to our channel there. And Becky's channel is Power Tools with Thread. Please go ahead and subscribe to her channel because she's got awesome educational content like this all the time, all the time. And it's great. Um, it's it's awesome. So uh, let's see what else we've got. Well, there are kind of questions we've got. It is the live factor. I, I feel like technology knows when we're when we're live and is like, I don't think I'm going to work today. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so, Lori, this uh, BES4 is slightly different from BES Blue. Um, they, it's just ever so slightly different. Um, so I think, Becky, you ready to go? Yes, I am. All right, let's do it. But you know what? If you have a version of BES, if, look in BES Blue and see if it'll work. It might. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Oh, maybe, maybe it did. I don't know. Let me hit embroidery and um, get this going. Remember, we already hooped the, uh, the topper. Let me put this in here and see what you guys can see. Yeah, you can see. Great. Okay, let me move this out of here. Um, I need to make sure that the design is going to show up right and stitch correctly on here. Let me put my little tab down. I am using an Oregon 7511 needle. I have a black because my bobbin thread is, um, my backing is going to be black. I have a, a black bobbins. These are from Designs and Machine Embroidery. They are pre-wound. I absolutely love these. I've gotten beautiful stitches from them. This is the Class A Style 15, and it has a 70D2 continuous filament polyester bobbin thread, uh, one-time use, and so you're not supposed to rewind these. I imagine you could if you wanted to, but these are phenomenal. I just hate to wind bobbins, and it's just so much easier. As much embroidery as I do, especially come Christmas. I definitely like using these. All right. So I'm going to pull up that trumpet. I'm going to hit the pocket for memory. And it is in the USB. So I'm going to touch the USB. And now I got to sort through a gazillion things that I had on this USB looking for my trumpet. There it is right there. And I'm going to tell it set. Now, one of the things I want to do before I go into embroidery module is I'm going to use the camera and I want to scan the background fabric so I can get this in the right orientation for it to stitch out properly. So I'm just going to hit the camera button and hit scan and tell it OK. And it's going to do its thing. So it's taking a picture of the fabric. And that is just the greatest thing in the world. I absolutely love this. I rarely do embroidery now without taking a picture of the fabric. I love this, it. This is like the coolest thing since sliced bread, really and truly. It's so useful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So now I can see my trumpet on my screen. I don't know if y'all can. Um, let me see if I can get you closer. Hold on. I'm going to Move my, I'm going to change my tripod legs here just a bit. Give me two seconds. And guys, and if you uh, if you do want to see it, um, in the last video, we, we took a little impromptu tour of Becky's sewing room. So okay. if you want to take a look at that, we did that at the end of the show, uh, the end of the January 6th show. So definitely check that out. Okay. Can you guys, let me, let me turn this. And get you up. Okay. I think you can see the dots that show the yeah. trumpet on my screen. Okay. I'm going to tell it close. 
And now I'm going to hit edit up here at the top and I want to touch rotate and it allows you, you can do move, but move only allows you the access to the jog buttons that you get right here. Rotate gives you access to also all of these buttons here. So I'm going to hit a 90 and I'm going to hit another 90. That's too far. I'm going to go back and, um, oh, it's upside down. Look at that. See, I can tell when it's upside down, which I just love. I know if I'm getting it right or not. There we go. I wanted to be making some music. This looks really good. And I want to get the red line outside of the shape. Uh, parallel to the black edge of the um, inner border there. So I'm going to do this one more time there. And you can minutely, there, that looks really good. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe I want it to, where is, so I don't know if you can see it because it's so small. I'm going to move it just a little bit so that the crosshair on the screen is on top of the crosshair with the um, with the chalk that I made. Remember I did that? So Becky, while you do that, we have a question, a, a good question from Ann Keller over on Facebook. Ann's wondering why would you not just use the projector that the Luminaire has? So you can, and I've done that. And um, right now when I'm in the edit mode right here, the projector is not available to me. And I like to do my editing before I go into embroidery mode. Once you're in embroidery, every little nudge that you make, your hoop's going to move. But this if you true. don't, yeah, if you don't touch the embroidery unit yet, you can really grab this and you can play with it and move it around oh, yeah. and all of that just a little bit easier than if, uh, matter of fact, I, um, now we'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. I'll tell it okay. Let me jump into embroidery. And see, it says change to a larger embroidery frame. Now, the reason for that is because, like I had said, you get that. Let me move this back. And there we go. It just didn't like where it was. And it does that sometimes. So if you guys don't haven't seen the Luminaire, this it has a little downward projected cone right there. And if I touch that, it is going to, let me show you. Hold on just a second. I'm going to lift my camera and get you in here so you can see. Can you see the trumpet? Yep, look at that. Projected down onto the fabric. Oh, there we awesome. go. So another reason I do not, one another reason that I do all of my maneuvering outside of the embroidery module is because if I don't, then it won't allow me, you know how it said change to a larger embroidery frame and then I moved it and then it was happy. It's never happy again once you're in embroidery. It just, it won't do it. You've got to stop and start all over and, it, and it's, it's not happy. But we're done. So I am just going to go ahead and hit the button and it's going to stitch the placement line for the trumpet. And I lost my color. Sorry. I didn't heat up my little iron. <laughs> so guys, in case you missed it, all that's happening right now is the machine is stitching out a placement line. So as soon as this placement line is done, all you need to do, Becky, is just put the applique on there, stick it on, make sure it's 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 nice and secure, and then you can just start doing your applique. That's right. Yeah. It's so easy. So, it's so easy. Yeah. We, we created this stitch with one touch of that button in simply applique or BES4, either one. Okay. So I'm going to remove the hoop and I'm going to, I want to show you. So here is the trumpet that we cut and look. I want to show you how perfect this fits. Look at that. Oh, 
Oh, that's so satisfying. Isn't that great? That's awesome. It fits absolutely perfect. So um, I could not do that with scissors. Now, this is the step where if you were using a design CD, you would go ahead and lay a whole piece of fabric to cover your placement line. Mm -hmm. You'd lay your whole fabric on it and then it would stitch the tack down and then you'd have to get in and trim around these tiny little keys on the, the little valves on the trumpet and you'd have to cut out that little circle right in there. And y'all, I don't want to do that. That's miserable. Okay. Especially, you know, I'm getting arthritis in my fingers. I've done it. So, it's a challenge. Yes. All right. So what I'm really doing is dragging out time for my iron to heat up is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so I've got my little mini iron here and I just, I love the mini iron and I have, I've got a steady Betty uh, sitting on my lap. So you always want to iron on a firm surface or whenever you remove the hoop, you want to put it on a firm surface so that your hoop does not pop apart. Because yes. if it pops apart, you have to start all over and you have to pick that out. And that's not fun. You know, we do so. have a fantastic hoop mat from Embroidery Garden that lets you iron things while they're still in the hoop without, like you said, that hoop kind of <laughs> popping open. Oh, my gosh. It's yes, I, just, I right. happen to have one of those. Let me show you how that works. That's a it's new product. Good. Let me let me show you that. <clears throat> These this this is the hoop she's talking about from this is the mat she's talking about from embroidery garden awesome. and i want to show you guys so look at this see how thick it is and it's got a rubberized bottom so it won't slide the whole point of this is you can tell on the side here let me show you the handle so you can see one side see how thick this is right here but it's very thin back here the point of this is if you are going to be doing in the hoop projects and you are required to work on the back of your hoop, if you don't use this, you've got a lot of play right here in the hoop. This allows you, you just put this down and it fits. And I've got a nice firm surface now. It's awesome. That is giving me a base. These are amazing and they have one for all different sizes, but they're great and different hoops uh, as well, machine brands. And they're pretty thick. Dawn was wondering how thick they are. I think they're probably a little bit bigger than like a centimeter in width, maybe about an inch, honestly. Um, so I would, I would thick. say, that, let me, I just happen to have a little measuring thing right here on the side <laughs> of the luminaire. Okay, so the whole width of this is five eighths. Oh, there the whole go. width of it is five eighths. And so you've got the rubberized backing that doesn't allow it to slip. You've got an, about an eighth of an inch of the handle plastic that's inside. And then you have the wool, thick wool. The, the wool is a good three eighths inch. And then it has another layer inside of that. So they're, they're very thick. They're very thick. They're very sturdy. I yeah. love it. Yeah. That was brilliant for them to come up with that. Yeah. All right. Um, so. I have ironed on my trumpet and he's, he's perfect. Okay. So let's get it back in there. And yeah, those are, um, those are really something. I like those. Hips. I love them a lot. And Michelle, to answer your question right now, BES4 does not come with a luminaire. However, we are including PE design 11 instead. And if you're thinking about the Luminaire, go for it. We have, we offer fantastic financing. So if you're near one of us, uh, one of our locations, please check it out. I am obsessed with the Luminaire. It's just so convenient. You're not going to want to go back as soon as you, as soon as you pick one up. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And sorry, you guys, I'm moving my, uh, I'm moving my thing around here because I want you to be able to see down in the hoop so you can see what's happening. Yeah. But, um, the PE design does not have the ability to import that FCM file from the scan and cut. PE design is a fabulous program to be able to do all kinds of embroidery stuff. And it's, a, it's wonderful. 
but I will let you know that's one of the reasons that they came out with Simply Applique, which I said was a module inside of BES4. Simply Applique is dirt cheap when it comes to the cost of software. Yeah. So it's definitely worth it. If you end up getting PE design, then you know go ahead and pick up Simply Applique while you're at it. And you will have 100% of the software that you need to be able to do everything that I'm showing you right now. Okay, so I'm just going to touch the button again, and it's going to stitch down the tack down line. Now, why do I have to stitch down the tack down if I already ironed it on, right? Well, I like to do that so that if there's any little fabric hanging out outside of the tack down line that's wider than usually you know, then I would want it to be, if you've got a satin stitch, it's usually about three millimeters in width, the satin stitch is. But if, if I'm doing this, I want to make sure there's no fabric hanging out so that that, if, if there is, I can take some scissors and do some micro trimming right away and take care of that. But I'm looking at it right now. There's not a bit. So my final blanket stitch is going to stitch perfectly on this. And I'm just, I can't wait to just see this. Now, here's the real beauty of Simply Applique and BES4. Those of you who have done applique by sewing machine, you know what it's like. Stitch, stitch, stop, turn, stitch, stop, turn. No, you don't have to do that anymore. It is fully, on. look at it. It's doing the blanket stitch right now. And it's amazing. Y'all, it's so, it's so worth it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think that Simply Applique on the all-brand sites like $169. You guys, that's dirt cheap for what this does. Yeah. Dirt cheap. Oh, yeah. Money well spent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for Money. sure. Yeah. Especially if you're if you're wanting to get into Applique, say you've already got a machine, you just want to try it out, um, you, you're going to get addicted really fast. I just want to say that. Um, you, you definitely will. Um, I was able to do some applique on a really cool Renaissance fair out this year. Uh, it was my first time doing applique on like anything at all. It was terrifying. Um, I tried a bunch of different methods, but that was eventually the one that I settled on. It just looked so clean and fancy and I got so many compliments on it. And I really attribute that to just how professional looking a software like this can, can make your finished product look. Yeah. Your stitches are all even, your points are right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to show you guys real close that what a great job this software just did. I love that little baby song. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Let me get up really close. Oh, um, wow. Over Look at here. That. that is just so clean. You love it. That is, so, and that fabric looks awesome too. I love the fabric choice. It's really, it's got a nice, like, subtle texture to it. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a moda that you guys have that you guys sell. I got all this fabric from all brands. Yes, guys, we carry all of this Mardi Gras fabric. Okay, I am getting ready to go over to the cutting table, and we're going to set up for simply app. Uh, the not simply applique. We've already done that. We're going to set up for clear blue tiles. Yes, guys. Okay, so I'm going to let Becky go ahead and hop on over there. If you are just joining us or if you've just joined us kind of in the middle of this, no worries. Uh, if you want to go back and watch this entire broadcast, it will be available to rewatch at the very end. Uh, like as soon as we go off the air, these should be available for rewatch. Um, so definitely do that. Um, you know, I'm not positive if Simply Applique has a trial. Um, I know PE Design 11 definitely does, but I'm not quite sure about simply applique. Um, but yeah, you you can take any shape into, you can make any shape into an applique with this. It, it's it's super awesome. Um, it's, I love it. I think it's great. Um, especially if, you know, like I said, this is something you're trying to get into and you, you've never done it before. Um, so let's see. I think Becky is almost ready. Becky, you ready? I am. All right. <laughs> All right. Are you guys having fun? Do you, anybody oh, my gosh. I don't know about all, but I'm having a blast, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a quick drink of water because I'm kind of dry. Okay. So let's take this out of the hoop. Now, here, I love what Kimber Bell has done to answer the call of, 
I want to be able to finish my own quilting designs, my own projects in my hoop, and I don't know what to do. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put this away down here. And I am going to get this out of the way so I don't cut a hole in it. And um, whenever you are doing these kinds of projects, y'all, think about uh, what I do with these big pieces of stabilizer. I'm so miserly. I will take them over to my sewing machine and I put them together and I sew them. And then these are usually the scraps that I use behind my toppers because um, nobody's going to see this. And the, the no-show poly mesh does not change the hand or the drape of your topper at all. So there it is. All right. Isn't this fun? This looks amazing. All right. So let's get busy with clear blue tiles. I'm going to put down this mat to help me uh, get straight. When you're using clear blue tiles, you know how I put the stabilizer in the hoop in order to do the applique. Well, what we're going to do now, I'm going to use a designs and machine embroidery. This is the large 10 by 16 magnetic monster snap hoop. Love, love, love. Okay. And I'm going to put this right here. And it's not going to go anywhere because it has these strips on the back of the long sides that allow your hoop to grip onto the designs of machine embroidery mat. So where this might slide here, it will not slide on this hoop mat. Okay. So instead of using stabilizer, I'm going to put on my backing. This is the backing for my hoop mat. Now it's very big and there's a reason for that. You want it to be big so that when you set up your clear blue tiles, I'm getting ahead of myself. When you set up everything to, to be in here and you finally hoop this and get it ready to go to the machine, you have some extra out here on the sides that's going to allow you to make sure your hoop fits everywhere and it get, gets held tight. But before we do that, what I want to do is show you guys how these clear blue tiles, yeah, I can go ahead and do this like this. It's much easier to do in the magnetic hoop than it is the standard hoop. Much easier. Okay. So you want to cut your batting the exact size of your project. And you want at least two to three inches extra of your backing on all sides. Again, I've got a video. If you go to Power Tools with Thread, clear blue tiles, there is a video of exactly how to do this. And I show how to do it with standard hoops. You definitely will need your grid. There's a reason they give you those grids. You guys don't throw those away. All right, so I've got this on top of my batting. My batting is cut pretty much to size and it was cut completely to size. I wanna make sure there's not a lot that sticks out. Your batting, you definitely want it to be as close to size as possible on your topper so that you don't have to trim it away when it comes. If you're going to self-bind, you want it to be the exactly the right size. So let me show you a clear blue tile up close. I got a folder here with a piece of paper in it so you guys can see what the clear blue tile is. Okay. So here on the clear blue tile, you've got some holes that are in it, lines with a center dot and a window right here for the size of the box. Okay. So this is the eight by 10 finished block. 
when I started on this particular live, we talked about this being, this system is a visual, it gives you a visual alignment of where the designs are gonna go. The beauty about the clear blue tiles is that all of the designs, regardless of whether it's on a little block like this or a giant block like this, they are all the same scale. The only thing that changes is the area of the pattern that it covers. That's it. So the swirls that are in this, if they're the size of a quarter, let's just say hypothetically, then the swirls that are in this one are also the size of a quarter. Does that make sense? So that way, they're going to be stitched all over in here to completely fill up this area. And they're all going to be filled in here to completely fill this area. And when they are stitched side by side, you can't tell that one was this, that one pattern was this big and one pattern was this big. So I want to use these clear blue tiles and I'm not going to use that blue fabric marker. I'm skittish of blue fabric mark, water soluble markers. This is a friction marker is what this is. And this goes away with heat. So right now I'm just going to stitch because I don't want to stitch over my applique. I'm going to make my clear blue tiles inside of my inner borders and my center square. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the eight by 10. I'm going to use the six by the four by 10. I'm going to use the two by six, two by eight, sorry, and my two by four. And when I put all these together, I can see that my, my whole inner uh, area here, center of my topper, is going to get quilted. So on these, again, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, on the topper, this right here in the middle, the top line has an arrow. That is the top of your design, all right? So all you do, oh, and also on these, there are little marks, little hash marks, top, corners, side, corners, and the bottom, all the way around. And you need to match up those hash marks with the tile next to it. So I'm gonna put the tile on here so I can see how this is gonna work. And then I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna draw and I'm gonna make my arrow and draw on my, on my project. I'm gonna put that dot and then in my window on here, I'm gonna eight by 10. You want to put the size in your window so when you're at the machine, you know that this dot works with your 8 by 10. My, um, I need a, that line is a yeah, bigger friction marker. And I'm going to 8 by 10. And then you want to touch these and mark those hash marks on the outside of the corners and on the middles. So anywhere that a tile, is also going to go up next to it. You want to mark the hash marks and make sure that you align them just right. I want to make my lines, make my arrow. I'm hurrying, guys. I know everybody's got to go make supper. Eight. This is uh. See, I can't see it. So under here, I'm in the white. I'm going to do four by ten. Yeah, that's the four by ten right there. I can't see it because of my dark fabric. Okay, and this one, it's important to line up those hash marks and make them, here's the arrow, make the dot, and this one is a two by eight. So I'm gonna put two by eight in the white part so I can see it. And then I'm gonna match this one here on the hash. Okay, so this just allows you, you, they come in all sizes. They come in like a five inch size. So you could do a charm square. This is two by four. Okay, and that's it. So I have pre-marked my top in the middle. And when I get done, what I probably
Hey guys, so I think we may have lost Becky. I think her camera froze. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you guys can see and hear me and it's not I an issue. Oh, there we go. There's yeah. Becky. <laughs> I looked up all the time. Okay, so I have Mark. Oh, oh. I could go to the luminaire and I could uh, stipple all around this. I've shown how to do that in other videos on my channel. In my table topper videos, I show how to stitch just this and not on your applique using the luminaire step by step. But if you wanted to use the clear blue tiles and you don't have a luminaire, I would do some stippling in here if you wanted to on your own free motion. You could do just straight line quilting. You could leave it blank. But these two inch tiles are perfect for quilting in your borders. So they'll fit in your borders just perfect. See that? It's great. It's a great little system. It's All right. Awesome. It is awesome. So what I'm going to do now is um, get this hoop. I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to put this right here. I want to be able to hoop that um, that first one that is the 8 by 10, and it's going to stitch right here. Where is, there we go. I'm going to take the magnetic hoop, find the edge of it. There it is down there at the bottom. And I'm just going to drop that. And it's hooped. So now we are ready to go over to the embroidery machine and stitch this out. So do you want to go over there, Callie? Yeah, let's let's do that. All right. Here, I'll I'm go ahead. And, uh, yeah, I'll Back go ahead and move over. All right, guys. So that was the dime snap hoop monster in case you missed it. Uh, so we're going to be going over back to the machine and we're going to do just a little quilting and then we're going to let you go. Uh, Cause I know we are kind of going over on the show today, but uh, we, it seems like y'all are still really excited for it. So we're going to keep going. Um, and yeah, that is a really nice big hoop. It's so awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, and if you have not yet, please go ahead and check out the category page that we have set up for this broadcast. It is over in the comments or in the description of this video. I'm sorry. It's in the description down below. Um, so we're going to go back to the machine and then we are going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be showing you just a little bit more. Um, so Becky, are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. All yes. right. Okay, I am back here at the Luminaire, and I've got the machine, uh, the hoop is loaded. I'm going to go to home, and I need to go to embroidery and the pocket for memory, and I want my 8 by 10 swirls. I'm pretty sure these will fit. Pretty sure. I hope we'll hit 8 by 10 and hit set. And then I need to get my crosshair. I need, I've got to rotate it a little bit. And then I've got to get my, um, actually, I, let me see. Where's my arrow for the top? This is a beauty of one of these hoops, you guys. I'm, I'm not hoop straight. Let me lift this up. And you can actually put this over the top of your machine. Okay. And I want to turn this. You cannot do this if you don't have, I'm always doing this, you guys. I am forever just one big hot mess at the embroidery machine. It seems so cool on my on my channel, but I'll tell you, it's a hot mess. <laughs> Hey, we all make mistakes, and I, that's what I like about that's what I like about doing the show like this. Like we all goof up, and that's all right. Because with something like this, I what what I love about this is just it's so easy to re-hoop and it is the best way to learn. You can only learn by making mistakes. Okay. That's not a mistake. I, I meant to do that to show how easy it oh, was. Yeah. To oh yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally meant to do that. All right. So I can see my dot that was in the center of my square right here. 
And I do, I'm just going to go to embroidery. And now what I want to do, there's a W right up here in the top with the embroidery foot. And if I touch that W, it's going to project a crosshair down onto my project. Now I'm going to go to layout and uh, I want to hit the rotate button and I'm going to just jog down to where it is. And I need to go over a little bit. Oh, way too far. I always do that. But I'm eyeballing that crosshair. It's getting to be right where I want it. That's it. It's perfect. I'm done. And um, is my I'm gonna make sure my needle's threaded. Yeah, it, my thread came out when I was moving my fabric around. Hold on here. I mean, put up. There we go. Quick. All right, so I'm ready to go ahead and quilt. And it's going to do its thing. That's simple. And by the time I get all of these done together, they will all mesh together and be one complete embroidery design. And you won't be able to tell where one started and the other one stopped. Guys, it's so easy. It is so, so, so easy. And, yep. you know, I just want to say, too, while we're while we're here and waiting on this to do its thing, um, guys, we do have, or here, let me, uh, I'll bring back that back so you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, so I just want to say that next week on the All Brand Show, we are going to have another fantastic educator talk about quilting in the hoop on the XP2 and using My Design Center. So if this here, if this right here is something that you're interested in learning more on, I know the show today has been a bit more focused on simply applique, but if this is something you're interested in learning more about, we are going to be having another show next week uh, where we're going to talk about this uh, this aspect a little bit more in depth too. Um, and yeah, guys, that snap hoop monster is so good. I, yeah, and just watch your fingers, right? <laughs> I think it's great. It's so awesome. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting so many OMGs. I love this. It's, it is so easy. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful system. You know, if you don't have a long arm, you literally, um, you know, if you're super ambitious, you could definitely do a large quilt. I've, I have a long arm though, but you know, you could do baby quilts, your, yeah. your tape, your placemats, your table runners, your wall hangings, um, anything that you want. And it's just doing a beautiful stitch and you get all those different designs that come with it. Now, um, they have an expansion pack. I don't have the expansion pack of tiles. Yeah to be able to line those up that, that are for these giant hoops. If you get the expansion pack, there's no more designs on the CD because the CD or the, um, the embroidery designs are on the USB that come with the main, uh, the, the regular pack of the clear blue tiles. Right, right. Um, oh, so Sandy has a question about the monster hoop. Sandy's wondering, are the monster hoops machine specific? Yes, they are. They definitely are. And the I think the only one, uh, yeah, you, you can go on there. And on the Designs and Machine Embroidery website, there is a compatibility chart where yes. they will let you know what if you have this machine this is the hoop that you need exactly yes. and yeah. we do have that on our website too okay so great. you want to yeah. check that out um we have a list of you know say if you have a particular machine you can find it on that list and it'll tell you exactly what SKU you need to order uh on our on our page for the snap hoops i'm loving this gold thread it's showing up in the black on the uh inner border it's just fabulous. oh yes oh my gosh yeah, and we do have, um, I had a thought. I don't even know where it went. <laughs> I need some coffee. It's it's late. <laughs> yeah. But it looks so, so good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm all about trying to make things easier. And like I said in my intro, um, my, my niche is the beginner machine embroiderer. And I try mm -hmm. to take the mystique out of the embroidery machine 
It doesn't matter what kind of machine you have. I have a quattro that I have done uh, videos on. And y'all, I cut my teeth on a Brother PE 770. So I learned on a machine that had a screen that was about this big. Mm -hmm. And that's where I figured out how to do what I'm doing. And then as my embroidery journey progressed, my skills progressed. But there wasn't anybody to show how to do these things. And a lot of this stuff right. didn't exist back then. Yeah. I mean, I made the mistake of buying a... A uh, $60 embroidery package of these really cute cats when I didn't realize that the machine hoop that my machine took was a 5x7 when I had the PE770 and the hoop that I needed on, on for those cute cats was the minimum of a 6x10. I didn't know that. And so I try to talk about those things on my channel. If you're beginning to embroidery and you want to learn, you know, everything you need to learn about your about how to do the process i i don't know every machine that's for sure i'm a, i'm a brother uh enthusiast definitely mm -hmm. but for the most part on most machines the buttons are the same the process is the same yeah but definitely the hooping all of that that's it's pretty much all the same so right. yeah oh. Looks like we're getting a few questions mary wants to know could you use a snowman sticker to center that design Yes, absolutely. Yep. You sure can. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. Can. Now, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Becky. <laughs> so for those of you that don't have a brother or a baby lock, um, the brother machine technology has what's called a little snowman. You've got that one nearby. And yeah, here they are. So here's the snowman. Okay. And all this is is a target sticker, but it's got a special ink on it that the brother machine can see and it will because the head is smaller than the belly and the belly button is your center point if you can actually like i'll show you i can align this crooked i i'm glad you brought that up that's perfect <laughs> so i'm going to use my snowman okay and i'm going to put it on let me lift this up again the beauty of the magnetic hoop okay I'm going to pull this okay. over. We want to do the four by 10 design now. So I'm going to take my snowman and I'm going to put it on the crosshairs with the belly button right on that dot. So, and I've got the head up toward the arrow up here. So now I need to get my project closer to center. And so I have re it. And I'm going to, there we go. How about that? Y'all, it, it does not get any easier. Truly, I mean, it really doesn't. And I love this. I can tag this like, yeah, just a little, there we go. Now my, now my project is straight. So now you talked about the belly button. And so I'm going to touch okay here. And I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to tell it okay. Let me go to embroidery, the pocket for memory, and I want my four by 10 design. I'm gonna to touch the four by 10, I'm gonna hit set. And now I'm gonna to go to embroidery. Uh, let's see, where is my snowman? Where'd he go, Callie? You know, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> layout, oh, it's under the layout button, y'all. And I'm going to hit the, there's, there he is. There's the snowman. I'm going to touch him. Okay, to revert to original position, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. And scan. And okay. Now it's going to take a picture and it is looking for the snowman. And I don't know if you can see it. It's right there in that big red. It found it. Recognizing. Uh-oh. Remove the embroidery positioning mark. So what it has done is even if I didn't hoop this straight, it will realign the design so that it stitches perfectly straight. I'm going to tell this, okay, I'm going to remove the snowman and I'm just ready to go. I'm going to hit my button. Y'all bear with just for a couple more minutes when this is finished. Uh-oh. I came unthreaded again when I moved my oh, yeah. stuff. So let me show you how to do that. If you make a mistake, 
like that. If it comes unthreaded, I'm going to rethread it. Oh, threading these machines is so easy. Yeah, super easy on there. One button. Okay, so you would go down here to the bottom to the needle plus minus button. I'm going to touch that, and I'm just going to touch zero. This allows you to go forward 110, 100, or 1,000 stitches, or it allows you to go backwards 110, 100, or 1,000 stitches. But the zero takes you back to start. So I'm now I'm just going to tell it go. And it's going to start doing its thing again from the top. And when we get done with this, I'll turn it over and allow you to see what the design looks like from the back. You're going to be, yeah. be able to see how these integrate so easy together. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let's see. We had a few other questions. So Linda is wondering, she's not a quilter, but this looks like something she'd like to do. Um, can she quilt the table topper with a multi-needle machine? And I would say yes, depending yes. on the machine. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so you have a multi-needle, right? I've got videos on my channel. Uh, you can power tools with thread multi-needle. And I can show you how to do applique with a multi-needle. Mm -hmm. And it's the exact same thing of doing the design as just as you would any other stitch on the multi-needle. Right. So there's just a trick when you have, when you're doing applique, that you've got to program in some stops so that you can put together your applique part. Right. So if you're not a quilter, I recommend checking out my channel on these toppers. I'm, I'm going to have one every month and you can just watch mm -hmm. and yeah. figure it out. But I give you baby step and quilting tricks in order to be able to get your pieces to match and make your corners and do all those little quilting things. I have a lot of embroiderers that watch that are not quilters, but they want to be. They're just not sure. Right. Trisha, yes, I do know who Darla and Spanky are. That was a, I have not heard those names in a hot second. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I know who they are, but I do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I got that from or where I heard that from, but yes. Um, Shirley is wondering, are you able to use the other designs with the clear blue tiles? Um, are, am I able to use any other designs with clear blue tiles? I think that's the what she means, clear yeah. blue tiles are designed to work with the designs that come on the CD or on the USB stick. Mm -hmm. Now, also on the USB stick, if you ever have watched me do like Kimberbell's uh, Red, White, and Bloom, or I just did a whole video series on Candy Corn Quilt Shop, those have designs that fit specifically into that block that are mm -hmm. stitched outside of doing it like this there are designs for that also on the usb stick yeah. and um yeah those are those are there too but you the, the the way the tiles are designed they're specifically for those designs that come on the usb stick with the clear blue tiles oh we're done <gasps> Oh my gosh. <laughs> that it looked awesome. It's I'm happening. Okay. So two more passes of those little small ones and my center will be quilted. All right. Yeah. So here's what it looks like from the front. You guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. So cute. Now. Here's what it looks like from the back. You can kind of see the hole puncture through it. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that. So I would go through and trim up these little tails. But, you know, other than that, so you really cannot tell where. Oh, I think Becky may have frozen. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> All right, I think Becky's frozen. We're gonna we're gonna rejoin. Hopefully, you can see me and hear me. I'm hoping. <laughs> there we um, go. There it is. Right. So, y'all tell me where the eight by ten finished and where the four by ten started. That's a lovely I question. I have no clue. <laughs> I can't tell. Right. 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 And so it looks just gorgeous from the front. You can see the stitching right. there. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's wonderful and super, super easy to be able to do this. So it would just take me, hold on here. I'm going to turn this down. 
it would just take me a couple of more passes to finish the inside and then be able to finish the borders as well. Yeah. And everything fits perfect. It fits perfect. It's great. And it looks so natural. It's not like you can tell that there's an obvious, you know, start point, stop point. It just looks so clean. It looks so clean. <laughs> and normally for something that clean, you'd ha either have to be a really good free motion quilter or just yeah. be really good at ruler work. Yeah. But this takes out a lot of that guesswork and a lot of that really meticulous uh, sewing just to get a, a lovely finished product. Yeah, um, it's it's wow. so satisfying. Like you said, it's so satisfying to have that be done. And you guys saw how easy that was. To be honest with yeah. you, if I wasn't talking through this, like 10, 15 yeah. minutes, done, you know? It's so, easy. It's Super so easy. simple. Yeah. Well, Callie, this has been awesome. Somebody needs to win a gift card. Yes, someone needs to win a gift card. So let's pull for that gift card right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add our gift card entry thing to the stream here. And we're going to go ahead and draw our winner. Um, wow, you guys. I'm really excited to see who's going to be winning this gift card. So let's find out. And Deborah. Oh, my gosh. Deborah had a Congratulations. You have just won a $50 All Brands gift card. If you would, Deborah, if you're still watching, please email events at allbrands.com and make sure you send us your name, your number, and your address so we can get that gift card over to you. But congratulations, Deborah. This is so awesome. Yeah, ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> Deborah has been a viewer of mine for a very long time. And uh, I will reach out to her on our Facebook yes. group. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, I think she's uh, she's got her herself a Power Tools with Thread t-shirt or something. I, I've seen her name plenty. So I'll reach out to her on email as well if she couldn't have watched to the end. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Guys, again, this has been such a cool show. Becky, thank you for coming on the show today. We We got to do that so quick. That was so fast. And... It looks so, so good. Info packed. The whole show yes. is packed. Yeah. So guys, if yeah. you missed any of it, if you missed any of it, it's okay. Uh, as soon as we go off the air, you will be able to rewatch this. Even if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, it doesn't matter. You can right. watch it either way whenever we uh, whenever we go off the air. If this is something you want to watch later, you can also bookmark this in your little watch later playlist over on YouTube. I do that way too much. Uh, I've got like 200 videos in mind because there's always stuff that I want to watch. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> so again, you guys, thank you so much for coming on and watching the show today. Becky, thank you again. And if you My are... If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to Becky's channel. It's right there down below um, this way, right there on her little title card. It's Power Tools with Thread. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to her channel. And if you haven't checked us out on our social media, please do that as well. Um, we're more active on YouTube and Instagram these days. So uh, our, our YouTube is just All Brands. Our Instagram is All Brands 1976. So I hope you learned a lot today. I so learned a lot. My for my social media crowd, my Instagram is Power Tools with Thread. We've got a Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. We've got fifteen thousand members in there. Check out my YouTube channel, Power Tools with Thread. We're over forty two thousand subscribers. Lots of fun going on in there. And uh, what there was something else I I have a thought. <laughs> oh well. Oh, I knew what it was. I'd like everybody to join me February first at three p.m. Uh, check out my blog on Power Tools with Thread. I am doing a She Shed event with designs and machine embroidery. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm hosting that. And I cannot wait. I hope you all can do join me for that. And it's going to be great. I know, Callie, you've done some dime events as well. Absolutely. And, uh, and so I was just so honored that they wanted me to help with that. So please check out my blog, Power Tools with Thread, or send me an, out send me an email, powertoolswiththread at outlook.com. And I will give you a link. You can get, you can register for free and you get a free embroidery design too for it. So it's awesome. But <laughs> all right, guys. Really thank you so much. Yes. Thank you all so much. And I had one more thing that I wanted to say. Oh, right. So next week, next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Central, come back and see us 
wherever you're watching right now, we're going to be doing the show again on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. And we're going to have the awesome Rosemary, uh, Rosemary Castillo Sarton on. And she's going to be talking about quilting in the hoop with my design center on your XP2. So don't miss that. And again, thank you all. This is the All Ranch Show signing off. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>